Some people are getting concerned that there's more concern for bipartisanship and crossing the aisle, working with Democrats, uh, than there is in draining the swamp and actually peeling away all of the, 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 the roughage that is preventing actually moving forward here on so many of these issues that affect people domestically. I was with the president in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Saturday. It, it took him an hour just to outline the highlights of the last 100 days. I mean, he signed more bills into law than any president in the first 100 days since Harry Truman. He's 13 different bills rolling back an avalanche of regulation and red tape on businesses across this country. 500,000 jobs have been created since the first of the year. Right. This president is fighting every single day uh, yeah. to advance his agenda, and uh, I couldn't be more proud to be standing shoulder to shoulder with him. Vice President Mike Pence calling into the Rush Limbaugh show yesterday, addressing growing criticism that President Trump isn't doing enough to drain the swamp. Let's bring in Mark Thiessen, columnist for The Washington Post, fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and a Fox News contributor. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning, Shannon. Okay, uh, folks who voted for the president, and I remember thinking this out there on the campaign trail, that the president had made so many big, bold promises, and people were excited, and they got on board. And I worried that those people would be disappointed if he were actually elected because it's a bold agenda, and they were expecting a lot, and they're expecting it in the first 100 days. Uh, is it fair to say he's not draining the swamp? No, but it's, uh, it's, it's hard to drain the swamp. Uh, the swamp is very big and it's very uh, thick with, uh, with, uh, with corruption and bad policies and all the rest. So it's a hard job and we shouldn't have expected him to be able to do it in the first hundred days. He got a lot done in the first hundred days. I mean, he did something more co consequential in his first hundred days than any president going back to Franklin Roosevelt. And that is get Justice Gorsuch on the Supreme mm -hmm. Court, which is going to change the direction of the, of the country for 30 to 40 years. That's a huge accomplishment. He started the work on tax reform. He started the work on Obamacare repeal. Those things are struggling. Those are hard things to do. It took Barack Obama 17 months to pass Obamacare. We shouldn't expect him to, uh, Trump and the Republicans, mm -hmm. to repeal it in 100 days. Uh, so, you know, I think he's doing well. And this budget deal was actually a pretty good deal that Donald Trump cut. Uh, so I don't think people should be upset with it at all. Well, you know those out there who are worried and, and had high expectations are pointing to things like continued funding for the ACA subsidies, um, you know, negotiating from a place of, of giving the left a lot of concessions on things that um, people think if you control the White House, the House and the Senate, you should be able to resist some of the pressures from the left. Uh, as I just talked about with Senator Roy Blunt, Senator Schumer said we had a strategy and it worked. We won. I mean, they are taking a victory lap over what they're accomplishing. Uh, meanwhile, those at home say we're not getting our border wall. The Money's still going to Obamacare. Money's going to Planned Parenthood, or at least it's accessible to them in some way through the states. Um, they want to see something different. No doubt. But look, this, let's keep in mind what this was. This was not the Trump budget. This was not Trump's agenda. This was last year's budget bill. This was the unfinished work that, that Barack Obama and the last Congress didn't do to keep the government funding. The budget that, that Trump proposed with all of his spending cuts and all of his changes was for next year's budget. So he was cleaning up the loose ends from last year. And despite that, he got some marginal victories. He got, he got $15 billion in increase in defense spending and broke the Democrats' uh, ironclad rule that every dollar of defense increases had to be matched by an increase in, in, uh, in domestic spending. He got uh, $12 billion for border security. He got money for school choice in the District of Columbia for the next three years. Uh, that, that's, that's significant for a, for a, for a, for a five-month spending bill. Mm -hmm. And what did the Democrats get? They didn't, they, they didn't get very much. They, 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 the Planned Parenthood funding, you know, Tom Price is not exactly going to be signing checks to Planned Parenthood at HHS. Uh, that's, that's not going to happen. And the, re, and the biggest concession that was made was by the Democrats in coming to the table and negotiating with Donald Trump and making concessions. The resistance was forced to come to the table, and they gave these things to Trump that asked for. They don't want their people to know that because they don't want, because they, oh, their people want him to resist Donald Trump. So mm -hmm. he's, they made concessions to Trump, and they're trying to overplay their hand in order to placate their left, far left base. Yeah, and if you're talking about draining the swamp, they should also get a lot of credit for rolling back all those regulations and really clamping down on sort of that Absolutely. regulatory state. Um, people looking for draining the swamp should be happy about that as well. Uh, Mark Thiessen, always good it's to see you. It's going to take a few years. Yeah, it does take <laughs> Thanks, time. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks.